Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session focused on Refugee Youth Action Fund to support community-based child protection. You can turn your camera on and please briefly introduce yourself using the chat, your name, your nationality, where you live now. Tell us about a child protection project you are implementing and what was your favorite game as a child. We have one minute networking within the chat. Yes, I'm seeing Kauma, Kauma from Democratic Republic of Congo based in, in Kenya and also is a humanitarian activist. And also hello Celestine Asule from UNHCR Chad. Nice to have you here. I'm seeing uh, SPDH from Burundi, nice to have you here. I'm seeing Foni from South Sudan, based in Kenya, nice to have you here. Natalie from German, welcome everyone. Yes, keep posting in the chat your name, where are you, uh, where are you joining from, and also uh, your nationality about uh, also about a child protection project you are implementing and your favorite game as a child when we are waiting others to join. So thank you everyone. My name is Farida Randa. Next slide please. I'm Farida Randa. I'm 25 years old and a refugee from Democratic Republic of Congo, currently based in Sweden. I'm a, I'm a refugee youth-led organization, a global refugee youth network, and within Green, I'm the Gen and the Diversity Coordinator. And also, I'm the founder of the Vision Group, which focusing on empowering and protecting children and young people in Chaka to refugee settlement in Uganda. I'm happy to have you all here. I, I will be moderating together with my colleague, but so, Bart, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Farid. Uh, this is uh, Bart uh, Mwanza speaking. Uh, I'm joining from uh, Zimbabwe, originally from uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. Um, it's uh, really a pleasure to be here. And uh, uh, within uh, the Global Refugee Youth Network, I'm uh, the Refugee Youth Led uh, Organization. Uh, coordinator. So that means in short, Green Rilo coordinator. So it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Bart. Uh, and to, here is our agenda for today. Yes. It has been a big year and we are really excited about the child protection work that young refugees are doing. In our session today, uh, we want to share an overview of GREEN and to highlight on how the GREEN Action Fund advances prevention of child protection, concerned through the partnership with the Refugee Youth-Led Organization, which is the RIROS. Uh, Bath will share an overview of GREEN, which is the Global Refugee Youth Network, and also the Global Refugee Youth Network principles and the GREEN Youth Action Fund for RIROS. And we have GREEN video on good practices from the refugee youth-led organizations. We'll be having the Mentimeter pool. And then we'll have a panel with a few speakers who will share some of their experience running child protection projects that Global Refugee Youth Network have, handed, have funded. We will have some time for question and answer discussion. So do not down any burning question you have in the chat. And then we will wrap up. So. Uh, that is our agenda. To start off, refugee youth-led organization, refugee uh, RIROs are present at the local community level and can provide crucial child protection services in those communities. Many young refugees have themselves gone through difficulties and are survivors of GBV, forced and child marriage, domestic violence, or other difficulties. We understand very well the child protection challenges in our communities, and we are in a unique position to prevent or respond to child protection challenges. We refugee youth-led organizations are in the community 24 seven. 
we are from the same cultures and we understand the challenges our communities face. It is important to build awareness and understanding amongst the broader membership of the Alliance of the value of the refugee youth led organizations working at the community level. There is a need to increase funding, support and capacity building for these refugee youth led organizations and link them with other child protection actors. Now I would like to invite my colleague, Bathelemi, to tell us a bit more about the Global Refugee Youth Network and how Global Refugee Youth Network is supporting refugee youth led organizations to run child protection programs at the community level. But the flow is yours. Thank you so much. Right, uh, thank you so much, uh, Farida. Uh, thank you. So uh, now uh, we are going uh, directly to talk about uh, the overview of uh, the Global Refugee Youth Network. And uh, please, you will always hear me talking about uh, green. So it's, need, it's not uh, the color, but it's just uh, the organization, which is the Global Refugee Youth uh, Network. So green is uh, a refugee youth-led uh, organization, uh, RILO, that uh, supports uh, young refugees to develop their capacities uh, to empower themselves, help each other and lead initiatives to respond to their community needs and advocate for the changes they feel are uh, important. So Green is led by uh, refugee youth leaders with uh, experience uh, in global advocacy uh, and community activism. Green works in close collaboration and partnership and is essential being uh, incubated by the Women's Refugee Commissions, which is a WRC. So now uh, let's talk about uh, the green uh, principles and I hope I will be on the next slide. Thank you. So here we are going to talk about uh, the green principles that uh, underpin our work. So first we have participation and self-representation. So green creates space for refugee youth to engage, participate, amplify refugee youth voices on issues, policies, and decision-making um, that are important uh, to them. So we also have uh, diversity and uh, inclusiveness. Uh, Green celebrates the beautiful diversity of refugee youth actively seeks to involve young refugees from all contexts, all regions, nationalities, ethnicities, religions, and all genders without forgetting those who are part of the LGBTQ plus community, those who are living with disability and any young refugee who brings any other aspects of uh, diversity. So we also have uh, independence and uh, partnership. Green seeks to develop as an independent organization that facilitates responsible freedom of uh, expression and builds close partnerships with uh, organizations, networks, and individuals that share the same uh, values and uh, aims. So we also have uh, responsiveness and uh, accessibility. So Green works to respond to the varied uh, needs and the uh, solutions of young refugees and RILOs and adapt its approaches, tools, and ways of working to make them accessible for all young refugees, whatever their situation. So here is our humanitarian principle guide uh, which guide our work. So we have humanity, we have neutrality, we have uh, uh, non-discrimination, independence, and especially do not uh, arm. So now uh, we are going to talk about um, uh, how like uh, the Green established a mechanism to fund uh, RILOs. So I would like now to talk about uh, that uh, mechanism yeah, on how we managed to fund uh, these smaller uh, projects uh, developed and uh, led by uh, Green. So we see uh, this as a way uh, to extend localization to include refugee youth led uh, groups and to support refugee youth to take action in their communities. So we really put uh, a lot of time into developing the call for proposals, making it accessible to small community based groups, even if they are not uh, formally registered. So we make sure that everyone is really uh, included. So we have developed uh, a varied TARA selection process with due diligence uh, where we talk uh, with uh, the references. We also spend some time to interview our group. We require 
Local groups to sign a code of conduct that address protection, prevention of sexual exploitation, and uh, abuse. So we support refugee youth uh, leaders to apply to refine their projects, ideas uh, to document implementation. So we check on uh, with the RILU project managers uh, to support them to troubleshoot and to help them uh, with documentation and uh, reporting uh, requirements. So I would like to give you at least um, the statistics of um, uh, the RILOs that we have uh, supported. So in the first round of uh, project funding in 2022, we funded 22 projects uh, at between 1,000 US dollars to 4,000 US dollars, and this was in uh, seven countries, and this making a total budget of uh, 60,000 US dollars. And then now, uh, since we are in 2022, uh, we have funded an additional 41 projects with uh, a total budget of uh, 110,000. So we do different uh, kinds of uh, capacity building to help them develop project management skills, including online mini workshops. These are very tailored um, to the needs of uh, community-based uh, refugee youth-led uh, organization. So I think now we will take a brief uh, break, and especially that I've uh, talked a bit lot. Uh, so I would like at least to request uh, uh, the uh, technical team uh, to maybe give us a pretty cool uh, video uh, that they're going to share with us. So um, technical team, please uh, over to you. Pour nous, ça a été responsabiliser et autonomiser les jeunes leaders. Supporting. Global Refugee Youth Network is empowering. Green is about opportunities. The Green experience has been impactful. You cannot imagine how many lives you have reached out. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, so much uh, for this uh, wonderful uh, video that uh, the technical team uh, shared with us. And uh, to all the participants, I would like to welcome you uh, back uh, to this uh, session again. So uh, this session explores how bringing together services that address uh, the need of children and young people is uh, uh, a key component to child protection. Uh, uh, child protection uh, systems and really uh, approach. 
So now I would like now to hear directly from you as I say that um, I have uh, really uh, talked a lot. Yeah, so then here we are going to take um, a mentiment where there's at least a question. We want at least, you know, uh, this session to be uh, interactive. So I'm sure very soon you are going to see um, uh, in the chat, uh, they will really put um, a uh, link. Yeah, so then you will have just to click on the link. It just depends on the language uh, that you want. You can use English, you can use uh, French, uh, you can use uh, Arabic or Spanish. So then this is the question. Can you give us one example of child protection project or initiative being implemented by young refugees in your community? And that's uh, the first Mentimeter questions. Yeah, maybe let me just come back to uh, the question maybe for those who have not uh, uh, seen and uh, you can even see it uh, on your screen. It was there, I'm uh, sure it will come back again. So can you give us one example of child protection projects or initiative being implemented by young refugees in your community? Yeah, so here I'm just going to take uh, yeah, one minute. I just want to hear from you. It's not only uh, what you do, yeah, even maybe other young people in uh, your community. So please feel free to share with us uh, in the chat box and feel free to use uh, both uh, uh, French, you can use English, you can use Arabic, you can use uh, Spanish. Yep, so here I can uh, see a sanitary towel distribution to young girls in primary school, uh, which is uh, a good practice. Uh, and there's another person who doesn't want to give an example. Um, yeah, it's too fine, it's fine. And then uh, there's also sports for children. Uh, fundraising to help unaccompanied minors. Yes, I can see uh, so many comments coming in. Please bring them in. Yeah, in the past we have done a uh, young person led radio shows uh, for uh, awareness uh, raising, youth uh, holidays, thematic talks, mentorship programs for South Sudanese urban refugees, youths in um, Eldoret, Kenya, uh, awareness uh, raising uh, activities in schools, uh, sports for girls and boys. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for these questions. Uh, comments. Yeah, so um, I can see there are so many uh, examples and I can see uh, there are some other people who are continuing uh, coming up with this uh, initiative. Please share them. But uh, in the meantime, I think I would like uh, now to hand back to Farida to take us uh, now to the youth panel. We want to, he to hear also from uh, our panelists. But please uh, keep on uh, bringing uh, the comments in the chat and uh, you can also use the link to share the comments with us. So Farida, I'll back to you. Thank you, Bart. Uh, thank you to take through a wonderful uh, session. Um, warm welcome to our panelists. I'm really excited to have you all here today. I couldn't make it uh, more special than to invite a wonderful panel to share about their work. First, this is a brief note to our audience. As our panelists are speaking, please share your question, questions or comments and thoughts in the chat. We will have a question and answer session just after we hear from all the speakers. Our panel includes young people who have run projects funded by Global Refugee Youth Network and Kate, who works with the Women Refugee Commission. I will invite them each to tell us about their child protection work that has been funded by the Global Refugee Youth Network. I turn first to Adil Achilo, the founder and the director of the Moncado Enterprises, a refugee youth-led organization that works with child mothers, empowers girls and young women, and works to prevent GBV in Kenya. Adil, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so very much, Farida. <clears throat> Hello everyone. I am really thrilled to talk, uh, to talk about our child protection work 
We, are, uh, we have operations in Nairobi and Adap refugee camp. And our work focuses on advocacy and building the leadership capacities of refugee women and girls, supporting sexual and reproductive health rights, preventing and addressing gender-based violence and teenage pregnancy, and facilitate access to education and self-reliance through uh, entrepreneurship. A key focus area for Monicado is our advocacy work on refugee girls, sexual and reproductive mm -hmm. health rights, education, early and teenage pregnancy, access to education, and self-reliance through entrepreneurship. In Kenya, the COVID pandemic resulted in a widespread teenage pregnancy uh, across uh, the country. This has been uh, felt acutely in refugee camps, such as Dadaab and Kakoma, where widespread teenage pregnancy caused undocumented number of young refugee girls to drop out of school or be forced into earlier marriages. Many suffered a uh, significantly mental health challenge uh, the Kenyan government took some uh, measures to support girls affected by the crisis across the country, but uh, very little support reached refugee camps to help young refugee girls through one of their hardest handle in their social economic development. With funding from Green, Moncado implemented the Girl Pass program, uh, Girl Pass project between January uh, to June 2022. The project targeted 30 girls and child mothers, refugee girls who were affected by um, teenage pregnancy crisis, age 12 to 24. We offered them psychological and mental health counseling, conducted a back to school campaign and entrepreneurship training and mentorship. Among the 30 beneficiaries, nine child mothers were supported to return back to school. Six of them were supported with business grants and two of them were supported with childcare shelter in the Dab refugee camp. Also, Monicado through the support of Green is currently implementing the Shade Race project, which aims to, uh, to increase the use of sexual and reproductive health uh, services and improve the delivery of sexual and reproductive health services that respond to the needs and desire of the young refugee girls through a multi-partner approach in the Dab refugee camp. Thank you so far, Rida. Uh, thank you so very much, Rida, and back to you. Uh, thank you, Adio. It is exciting to hear about your experience and your work with the refugee children who are child mothers. Now I want to pass the mic to Bello, a project manager, Union Supportive des Jeunes Refugiés, a refugee youth-led organization that uses sport to foster peace and social cohesion for children and youths in Morocco. Bella will be speaking in French. So if you are English speaking, please go to the English channel. Bella, the floor is yours. Merci, Farida. Bonjour à tous. Je me présente, je suis Bello. C'est un plaisir d'être là avec vous aujourd'hui. Je suis réfugié centrafricain, actuellement euh, résident au Maroc. Je suis fondateur de l'association USUR, Union sportive des jeunes réfugiés, et euh, employé au sein du groupe Intelsia Maroc. En fait, USUR est une association sportive qui permet d'accompagner les jeunes réfugiés aujourd'hui par le biais de l'esport pour une cohésion sociale durable et leur inclusion à travers l'esport et aussi un moyen de renforcement des capacités qui est, fin qui est financé aujourd'hui par Green. Donc, euh, Aujourd'hui, nous travaillons la majeure partie avec des jeunes réfugiés, des jeunes filles et des garçons. On utilise le pouvoir de l'espoir pour leur permettre de renforcer leurs capacités. Et aussi, euh, afin de créer une cohésion sociale durable, notre association donc, permet à ces jeunes de prendre du plaisir et aussi de devenir autonomes et euh, de se sentir libres quand ils pratiquent les activités qu'ils aiment. Aujourd'hui, grâce à cette initiative, donc, on a pu toucher la première activité l'année dernière à peu près plus de 150 jeunes. Et aujourd'hui, une dizaine de ces jeunes ont eu à intégrer des centres de formation de football qui leur permet de réaliser leurs rêves en tant que des sportives, soit devenir des athlètes professionnels. Et cela est dû grâce au financement donc une a mis en place qu'on a pu participer afin d'aider ces jeunes-là. Nous ne limitons pas juste pas à ce niveau. Donc aujourd'hui, on veut faire de ce réseau 
sur le plan international afin de toucher le maximum des réfugiés possibles et des jeunes. Donc, dans ce sens-là, surtout à travers les sports. Et puisque aujourd'hui, les sports est utilisé comme un moyen de communication qui peut aller au-delà des limites qu'on peut réfléchir. Parce qu'à travers les sports, on communique facilement et on peut tisser des liens plus rapidement. Voilà le rôle de notre travail au niveau de Maroc. Merci Farida. Merci à Bella. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much, Bella. I was really awesome to share with us the amazing work you're doing. Uh, now let's uh, hear from Kauma Casey Benveni, an activist and project manager with Kalobei Umoja Association, a refugee youth led organization that supports and skills children and young people with disabilities in Nairobi, Kenya. Kauma, the floor is yours. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Bariba. Uh, good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Koma Kesekinveli, originally from DRC Congo, but um, currently based in Alubay Settlement Camp. I'm a humanitarian activist, having a diploma in disaster management, but also a member of the YALI network. I also have a background in web development, and I am the founder and project manager at Kalobe Umoja Association. Uh, Kalobe Umoja Association is a registered refugee led organization based in Kalobe Settlement Camp in Kenya that serves refugees and host communities, intending to promote education, child protection, and hygiene and sanitation. So far, Kalobe Umoja Association has been able to serve over 700 refugees and host communities. Under the child protection sector, the Green Action Fund helps us to encourage all children with disability to enroll in the school and help to provide a safe space where neglected children can gather with others and share ideas and experiences and make friends. This also includes drawing, storytelling, so that they can release stress and focus on their well-being. With the Green Fund, we have been able to, able to provide psychosocial support to children who live with disability, but also help to work closely with young girls and boys, especially those who are transitioned from children to adolescents. We prepare them mentally by emphasizing them to keep their values, culture, and identity. During the pandemic, the Green Action Fund helped us to run the campaign on hygiene sanitation. This project was focused on young people between the age of 14 to 18, and we share good practice of hygiene sanitation and the importance of it in our daily routine. And each participant received 500 ml of sanitizer and one bag of soap. This activity helped us to pass a mass awareness of prevention and engage together to fight against outbreak disease that attacks children and especially those who live with disability. Thank you so much, Farida. Over to you. for the great work you're doing on child protection, very powerful. And now I would like to hear from Kate Mahoney, who works uh, with the Women Refugee Commission, which has partnered with Global Refugee Youth Network to support our efforts to channel funds to Rai Rose, which is the refugee youth-led organization to support their communities. Kate, why has Women Refugee Commission chosen to advance child protection in refugee communities by partnering with the Global Refugee Youth Network and funding youth-led work? Kate, the floor is yours. Thank you, Farida. Um, well, as a first start, because it makes really good sense and it's the best way we can see to do that. Women's Refugee Commission advocates and acts for the rights of women, refugee women, children, and young people. And as we've heard really clearly from Adu, Kaoma, and Bello, young refugees are doing just amazing work uh, in terms of child protection in refugee communities. As you mentioned, Farida, young refugees have gone through displacement themselves, and many have witnessed or experienced early marriage, early motherhood, global uh, GBV, or other forms of violence, or other child protection concerns. So young refugees bring a huge wealth of lived experience and insights to their child protection work. They are there in the community 
24 seven. So they see and hear and know what is going on and can forge trust in a way that someone coming in from the outside just can't. Uh, young refugee leaders who are passionate about child protection are really vital as child protection actors. And we need to really recognize their work and reinforce their work. So for Women's Refugee Commission, by working with GRIN to run this youth action fund, we can really leverage the talent and passion that young refugee leaders have and thereby support child protection in refugee communities. We also see this type of partnership with young refugees as a really a way to advance localization. Localization um, focuses on moving funds and resources to national NGOs, but often these localization efforts don't really extend those resources to refugee-led organizations in, in refugee communities, whether they be in urban areas or camps. And this is in part because many of these refugee-led groups may have difficulty registering in those contexts, and so they can't receive for funds formally from donors. So by partnering with GRIN and channeling funds as well as support to community-based refugee youth-led organizations, this enables Women's Refugee Commission to extend our protection and rights work um, to those children in those refugee communities. And this way, we're also able to really kind of just bridge that gap between donors and community level work. This innovative approach to localization can really strengthen child protection where it's needed most. And, and we feel this is an important investment for our organization. So we're really grateful that we can partner with GRIN to make this happen. Thank you, Kate. And now I have another question for you, Adio. What has working with child mothers taught you about yourself? And why is it important to fund refugee youths uh, who are supporting child protection? Wow. Uh, thank you so very much, Farida, for the amazing uh, question. As a refugee youth leader and advocate with life experience as a refugee my own life, working with child mother has been a humbling experience that has taught me important lessons about companion, resilience, and the importance of fostering a supportive community. Um, it has reinforced my commitment to advocating for the rights and well-being of refugee girls and women. And it has deepened my understanding of the complexity, complexity they face in their journey toward a bright future. Uh, it is important to find refugee youth who are, supporting child, uh, who are supporting child protection for several reasons. One, uh, refugee youth leaders have direct experience with displacement and other challenges faced by children within their communities. And in such a circumstance, they bring valuable experience and insights based on their understanding of the unique uh, the unique needs and uh, vulnerabilities of children of the child refugees, enabling them to develop effective programs and intervention that address these specific issues. Second, funding refugee youth, funding refugee youth uh, who support child protection allow them to take an active role in shaping and leading initiatives within their communities and by funding, we promote their meaningful participation and agencies, fostering, to, fostering a sense of ownership and responsibility in addressing child protection concern. Uh, that refugee youth often take a holistic approach to child protection, addressing not only immediate needs, but also promoting education, health, psychosocial well-being, and overall empowerment by funding their work. We support comprehensive intervention that consider the multiple dimension of child protection. Last but not least, investing in child uh, in refugee youth, uh, investing in refugee youth-led child protection initiatives foster sustainability by equipping them with necessary resources, training, and providing support. We enable them to develop long-term solutions that can be maintained and expanded within their communities, even after the external support business. Thank you so very much, Farida. Back to you. Thank you, Adio. Well done. The diversity of each individual needs to be taken into account, and that refugee child needs to be involved in decision, decisions that impact their lives and to design programs together. Keep up the good work.
Now back to you, Belo. Belo, when working with children, what do you consider your biggest strength? And why is it important to fund refugee youths who are supporting child protection? Note that Belo speaks in French. Let's go back to our interpretation channel. Those who speak English, uh, we can use that interpretation channel to hear Belo very well. Belo, the floor is yours. Merci, Faradia. Et au fait, en parlant sur la question de travail avec les enfants aujourd'hui et par rapport à la protection de l'enfance, pour répondre à cette question, je pense qu'on se converge tous aujourd'hui dans la vie euh, vers ce qu'on aime et ce qu'on veut faire. Et pour moi, deux verbes permettent de définir tout ce qu'on fait tout, durant toute notre vie. C'est le verbe aimer et aider. Cela doit être notre plus grand atout, tout simplement. Aujourd'hui, notre plus grande force réside dans la capacité donc, de créer un environnement sécurisé où les jeunes peuvent se réunir, établir des liens et s'engager dans des activités sportives qui vont au-delà euh, de simples pratiques physiques. Donc, notre association utilise le sport comme un outil puissant pour promouvoir l'épanouissement physique, social et émotionnel des enfants réfugiés. Le sport offre aujourd'hui, par exemple, une plateforme, euh, une plateforme où les enfants peuvent développer déjà leur confiance en soi, renforcer leurs capacités sociales et surmonter les traumatismes dont ils ont vécu dans le passé. En plus, cela leur permettra de construire des relations positives. Mais cependant, pour que cette initiative puisse atteindre à ses pleins potentiels, nous avons besoin de votre aide. Et votre contribution est vraiment essentielle. Pourquoi Pourquoi investir aujourd'hui sur les jeunes réfugiés qui soutiennent la protection de l'enfance Il est important. Pour plusieurs raisons, tout simplement. La plupart aujourd'hui de ces enfants sont exposés donc, aux plusieurs risques de devenir, par exemple, des enfants soldats. Ces réfugiés que vous voyez, ils peuvent être enrôlés comme des enfants soldats qui va gâcher leur avenir, tout simplement. Aussi, il y a l'abandon de cursus scolaires. S'il n'y a pas un suivi avec ces enfants, ils peuvent abandonner des cursus scolaires, ce qui leur risque de les voir d'ici demain des, bon, des voyous dans des rues. Et les filles peuvent exposer aujourd'hui à la prostitution. Donc, il est vraiment important de se pencher sur cette question aujourd'hui, sur la protection de l'enfance. Donc là, ces enfants ont tous un rêve. Accompagner les enfants aujourd'hui, c'est notre devoir en tant que donc, leader. Si nous ne le faisons pas, nous trahissons euh, notre devoir en tant que défenseur de droits de l'homme, tout simplement. Voilà pourquoi il faut soutenir cette cause Premièrement, parce que les jeunes réfugiés aujourd'hui souvent ont une connaissance approfondie donc, des réalités vécues par les enfants réfugiés et ils partagent souvent les mêmes expériences donc, que vous avez aujourd'hui, telles que leur proximité. Et comprendre, ils peuvent comprendre aussi facilement les besoins des jeunes réfugiés afin d'identifier tout simplement les besoins spécifiques que ces jeunes en ont. Donc aujourd'hui, investir sur les jeunes réfugiés, c'est investir dans la durabilité et l'autonomisation des jeunes réfugiés. Alors, de plus, les jeunes réfugiés aujourd'hui s'engagent sur la protection de l'enfance pour permettre des opportunités donc, de développement personnel et des formations de renforcement des capacités. Cela va leur permettre d'atteindre leur plein potentiel, donc le leadership de demain. Alors, si... On ne se focalise pas sur la question de la protection de l'enfance aujourd'hui. Croyez-moi, demain, on n'aura pas des leaders parce qu'on a été des enfants hier et demain, on serait des responsables de ce monde. C'est pourquoi aujourd'hui, il est très important de focaliser sur la protection de l'enfance et investir beaucoup plus dessus parce que ces enfants sont l'avenir de demain. Merci Farida, je te rends la parole. Thank you, Bello. Merci beaucoup, Bello. And now I want to pass the mic uh, to Kaoma. Um, Kaoma, how has the Green Action Fund helped you uh, to run your project? Uh, the floor is yours, Kaoma. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Fariba. Uh, 
I would like first to highlight a bit about our environment. Uh, Calabay settlement is a refugee camp that hosts over 6,000 refugees who are coming from different countries, but also with a different background. And the majority of this community are single mothers and children. The Green Action Fund helped us to come up with an initiative that takes care of those adolescents by monitoring them and also working closely with young orphans by having focus group discussions that help us to understand their needs and their challenges. With the Green Action Fund, we're able to serve over 250 children together with children living with disability. All actors, including the government, institution, UNCR parents and community leaders need to engage together to support the work that change makers are doing within their community by supporting their campaign mobilization, prioritizing capacity building frameworks that focus on child protection activities that will help re refugee leaders to understand deeply child protection and provide quality services within their community. Child protection is a large sector with a various topics of programs that require good expertise. And in terms of providing quality services, it will also be very important for uh, child protection organization to work directly with a refugee-led organization so that uh, RLOs can learn from their experiences and strengthen their capacity, but also make them more professional. So thank you so much, Farida. Back to you. Um left inspired and wanting to know more from all of you. I'm coming back soon. Uh, now I want to pass the mic to Kate. Uh, Kate, tell us how our uh, Women Refugee Commission collaborates with the Global Refugee Youth Network uh, to channel funding to youth groups. To Thanks, youth Farida. Kate. Thank you, Farida. Uh, I, I really just want to talk a bit about the partnership between GRIN and Women's Refugee Committee, the Women's Refugee Commission, and how that enables us to really bring localization to life. I think sometimes the potential role of international NGOs to advance localization by partnering with refugee youth-led organizations sometimes gets overlooked. The, the Women's Refugee Commission partnership with GRIN and the network of refugee youth-led organizations that have received funding and are implementing projects is a great example of how these sort of complementary roles skills and capacities can make a great partnership. The Women's Refugee Commission is an international NGO that has very well established and strong financial and administrative systems and controls that donors trust. So that has really enabled Women's Refugee Commission to receive and administer funds from large donors, institutional donors like the Swiss government, like UNICEF, Open Society Foundation and uh, Norwegian Refugee Council and to channel those funds to refugee youth-led organizations to run their child protection projects, many of which don't have that, those same level of, of connections to donors or kind of administrative capacity. But Women's Refugee Commission simply could not do this without GRIN. The young refugees who make up the leadership team at GRIN came up with the idea of funding refugee youth-led projects. Um, they have the passion, they have the connections, they have the network, um, and, and really the know-how of how, how to do this and how to reach young refugees who are doing this great work at the community level. But GRIN does not have the full legal status as an independent organization yet, although I'm sure it will soon. Um, and it is building its, its administrative capacity to fully handle administrative uh, and grant management, but that's not fully in place now. So we can work together. And um, we, by working together, we're able to support and, and sort of fuel and, and move forward the ideas, the understanding of Hi Rilo's work and the connections that GRIN has. So um, in order to do this, we work together really closely, the admin and uh, financial staff at Women's Refugee Commission together with GRIN to figure out the details and develop an application process, a selection process with a lot of due diligence um, and uh, finally a way of transferring funds and all of that that's very accountable to the donors as well as to the communities that's consistent, that's transparent, um, but is also accessible for young refugees who may not have program management skills and experience, who may not have be registered or have a bank account, but we're still meeting them where they are so that we can fuel and fund their work 
um, and support their expertise, which is based in the communities, which we can't reach. So it really is about kind of bringing together these complementary skills um, and out of that, creating something that's really innovative. So Grin and the, in the WRC admin and finance teams meet regularly to adjust and improve the process and ensure smooth collaboration and accountability and to figure out how to overcome new challenges in terms of getting funding to young people who may have some difficulty receiving those funds internationally. Um, and the, the admin team at WRC tell us all the time that this is their favorite project and that they have a lot of passion for it too. So it's, it's a really nice connection. And I think that's at the heart of the partnership that's making this kind of localization um, actually work. Back to you, Farida. Thank you, Kate, and thank you, our panelists. Uh, you are doing amazing work and taking a real holistic approach to preventing and responding to child protection concerns. Uh, before we pause uh, discussion questions, I would like uh, to I would like to pause for a moment to see if there are any questions from from the audience. So uh, please keep on post a question in the chat and then we can uh, uh, pause directly to our panelists. So check it, uh, let me check the chat just in one minute and uh, then to see some of the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think uh, I will start with you, uh, Kauma. There is a question. What do you think to do in the future about the disability approach? Kauma Daphne. Yes. Uh, thank you so much again, Farida. Uh, I think uh, people with, especially young children who live with disability, they are a kind of human, uh, call it human uh, they are isolated. And, uh, you know, there's that kind of, uh, it's not everyone who is going to, uh, to uh, access them or uh, visiting them. So they need a kind of intervention. We need to put in place uh, a system that will focus and provide a kind of services for those uh, children because without being close with them, stress is there with, with them. First, they have the ability, uh, that's kind of isolation. And then it's for us now leaders, young leaders who want to see those challenges, work closely with our young, young children. And then, yeah, see if something will pop up. And... Thank you, Kauma. Uh, and now to you, Adieu. Um, a question directed to you, Adieu. Do you have experience for the replacement, replacement of abandoned children in refugee camps? And if have, how to how to manage it to these children for protection and safe? To you. Uh, thank you so very much, Farida, and. Uh for the amazing question. Okay, so uh, being in the refugee camp, we never had any chance, we never had any cases of uh, abandoned children. But what we have are an unaccompanied minor, like children of the age of nine, 10, below 18 actually, uh, without uh, an, any caregiver. So what happened is during the registration, when they're being registered or the verification, uh, they are being given, they are being assigned to caregivers. Another thing that we work or what, what we have an experience is you find a girl, when I talk of child mother, I talk of a girl who is below 18, let's talk of the age of 12, having a baby. That is a child mother because it's a baby having a baby, okay? So what do we do in that scenario? We actually assign a caregiver for both of them, the, 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 the mother and the baby because the mother is 12 years or 13 and the baby maybe is just six to four months. What we do is to assign a uh, a caregiver for both of them and also try to be supportive. And if they have an issue with security or insecurity or anything that needs uh, um, a protection case, then we have protection areas in the refugee camp in both Kakoma and Adab, whereby people with, with insecurities or case of, of uh, protection are usually placed. 
and other necessary protection are always provided in the camp. Yeah, thank you. I hope I have answered your question well, and if there's any doubt then you can follow up. I think, thank you, Adieu, thank you so much. And uh, now I turn my mic to, uh, to Bello. Bella, I have a question for you. What advice would you give to refugee led organization so that they can begin their work in child protection? Do we have Bella? Yeah. Yes, Bella. Yes, uh, Bello, let me repeat that yeah. question. Okay, yes. Je suis là, Farida, désolé, vous m'entendez? Oui. Oui, oui. I can repeat that question, Bello? Uh, what advice? Okay. okay. What advice would you give to I think we have a connection challenge with Bella. Um, what advice would you give to refugee-led organizations so that they can begin their work in child protection? The floor is Bella. Merci, Farida. Merci, Farida. Alors, euh, aujourd'hui, je pense que sur les conseils qu'on peut donner euh, aux organisations pour travailler euh, sur la question de la protection de l'enfance, je pense qu'il y en a plusieurs. On peut citer pas mal de choses aujourd'hui qui peuvent aller euh, dans ce sens-là. Déjà, il faut savoir que les réfugiés ont des accès qui ont limité, que ce soit au niveau de l'éducation, que ce soit au niveau de santé, que ce soit au niveau de l'habitation. Il faut d'abord se pencher sur la question des besoins primordial des réfugiés aujourd'hui et investir dessus pour permettre l'épanouissement des jeunes réfugiés. Parce que si on ne le fait pas, ça veut dire qu'on laisse ces jeunes-là dans l'abandon et aujourd'hui, ceux-là peuvent les pousser aujourd'hui à exposer à pas mal de risques. Donc, investir beaucoup plus dans l'autonomisation des jeunes réfugiés, leur donner l'accès, que ce soit à l'éducation, puisque ça a un peu limité aussi, on peut voir dans tous les sens, ils n'ont pas assez d'accès à certaines priorités comme d'autres personnes. C'est tout simplement le conseil que je peux donner aujourd'hui. Si vraiment ils souhaitent à soutenir en cause, c'est de donner au maximum et s'investir sur les questions dont les problèmes dont les réfugiés rencontrent aujourd'hui, dans l'air, que ce soit sur des sites, sur des camps de réfugiés, afin de leur permettre tout simplement de, de, de s'épanouir et de développer leurs capacités. Merci beaucoup, Farida. Je te rends la parole. Thank you, Bello. Uh, I want to pose this question to Kate. I'm going to combine these two questions, and uh, I think these are the last questions we, I will take due to time, but keep on posting questions. Um, uh, Kate, what do you consider to be the most important issues when considering child protection? And also to touch base, how many uh, uh, like, can let us know how many percentage of the projects of young refugee with disability have the Global Refugee Youth Network supported this year. Thank you so much <laughs> to you, Kate. I think the most important thing in terms of, of child protection from, from my perspective is really, is really that piece of supporting community-based actors both with funding and with capacity building and with networking, connecting to other actors um, so that they can strengthen their work. To me, that's the most important part. And I think as, a, as an international NGO, uh, we have to think, and as other international NGOs, we have to think really carefully about how we do that. So it's much more efficient and much more effective and really, I think, a lot better if we can be partnering with other organizations, whether it's partnering with GRIN, which is a global organization that then acts locally, um, is a great way to actually channel that support directly to community-based organizations that we, we couldn't really otherwise connect with. So I, I see that as the kind of the most important role for international NGOs is transmitting, channeling funds and 
transmitting knowledge and helping um, those organizations to build their capacity and connect in with, with international standards. But to do the work themselves, I think that that's the best way, as I think one of the, the comments um, noted, that's probably the future of effective humanitarian action is localization, but full localization through different through partnerships, not localization that just stops at national NGOs, but localization that really um, continues to refugee youth led organizations. And I'm, I'm sorry for you in terms of disability, I'm probably not the best place, but I know that Grin has supported um, each year has supported one project that was specifically focused on disability um, and supporting persons with disabilities at the community level, but also several other projects that included that within their project, such as the project that Kaoma spoke about so eloquently. Uh, thank you so much, Kate. We still have uh, like two questions. I don't know if I can bring it. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the time. <laughs> Question is still coming, but uh, I think you'll keep on posing the questions and also will be, uh, I think it will make sense if you can share your emails with Alliance team and then we can uh, also those questions, we can uh, share the answers through directly to your emails, what you have asked. I think I can pick these two questions. Uh, still one is for you, Kate. Uh, what has been the most gratifying experience where you have had in a project with the children? Sorry for No, I'm sorry, sorry. this is for Adieu. I was gonna say, I think adieu. that's not for me. No, 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 no. It's not She's true. much better, she's a much better place to speak. What, <laughs> what has been the most gratifying experience you have had in the project with the children, with working with children? Just in one minute, Adieu. Come again. The question is, what has been the most gratifying experience you have had in a project working with children? Okay, so I think I have mentioned before that uh, working with children make me uh, deeper, my, it's, make, uh, it's make me have like more understanding of what children are, how complex it, they are. Another thing about working with children is you have to be patient because these children need to be told their brain is not yet developed. So for me, I think it's all about patient, all about also trying to work and also respect their rights as well, because I believe most of the people that work with children, they're supposed to be like, that. they're the ones that are supposed to be respecting and also teaching these children on what their right is. But you find them, the same, same people, violating children's rights. This is what I've come to realize working in the refugee context. Like for instance, in, uh, in, in, in schools, and, and maybe at home at the same time. But also, other thing I also came to realize is that you have to be friendly with them. Like for instance, work, trying to talk to a girl who just who is pregnant at the age of 13, and you're trying to be harsh with them, they will not open up. So it needs trust. You have to build trust with them. You have to be patient with them. And you also have to have understanding and also different type of understanding or a higher level of understanding or else you'll, be not, you'll not be able to get along with them. I hope I have answered your question well. I thank you, Adieu. Thank you. Keep posting your questions in the chat. We'll come back on that. Uh, uh, so, um, before we wrap up, we really appreciate you sharing uh, your, uh, your perspectives, experience, and recommendations. And this is so good. So I want to go back to our panelists to share their recommendation with us, with that, to the NGOs, the international organizations, the refugee-led organizations, to everyone in the audience. So, but we have only one minute, just share recommendation. I'm going to start with Adu herself to share your recommendation in one sentence and one minute. Wow, that's all. Okay, uh, thank you so very much, uh, Farida. So for my recommendation, I have like four recommendations. My apologies. My laptop is misbehaving. Yeah. Uh, so for refugee leaders, it's our responsibilities to empower 
and amplify the voice of our fellow refugees, ensuring their meaningful participation and represented in decision-making process. Second, I'll also have a recommendation for donors. It's in addition to partnering with RLOs, uh, which are often in a better position to provide advanced protection and cultural protection solution in post displacement context, where international uh, refugee agencies have limited or no access there is a need to invest in long-term suitable solutions that address the root cause of displacement, including education, livelihood, and access to essential services. For NGOs, my recommendation would be for them to prioritize the community lead initiative, recognizing the expertise, I will stretch their expertise and knowledge that refugees bring to table. Thank you so very much for reading. Thank you. Thank you so much. To you, Kaoma, in one sentence and one minute. Yes, thank you so much, Farida. Uh, for me, I would just want to highlight again that uh, refugee leaders are in the front line serving their community day and night because they are the one who understand their community. They design projects according to their needs and challenges. All they need is the trust and the international organization who are working in child protection to collaborate by sharing experiences and guides on child protection long-term projects so they can be able to serve their, uh, the most vulnerable children. Donors should, focus, should also focus on localization by providing financial support that will support the work that the Global, youth, uh, the Global Refugee Youth Network is doing together with refugee-led organizations that are working in child protection. So for me, yeah. Thank you, Farida Obatim. Thank you, Kaoma. Uh, to you, Kate, in one minute and one sentence. I would say trust youth to design and run child protection programs and invest in them. Recognize their child protection work. Provide refugee youth leaders with training and capacity building on child protection and really importantly, fund their initiatives, find ways to partner with them, even if they're not formally registered organizations, find ways to partner with them um, and really fuel their, initi their initiatives. Refugee youth are an amazing asset as we've seen like with the projects that have, we've had chance to learn about today. Um, and the best thing we can do is to, to fuel those efforts. Thank you, Kate. And uh, to you, Kauma. Hey, sorry, Bello from Morocco. Uh, your recommendation in one minute and in one sentence. The floor is yours, Bello. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, uh, Farida. Encore une fois de plus. Alors. En parlant de la recommandation, aujourd'hui, moi, je pense que tout simplement, je tiens tout d'abord à remercier toutes les personnes qui sont là et qui ont pris du temps à écouter tout ce qu'on a à dire. C'est vraiment important en parlant de la confiance, surtout qu'on doit faire aujourd'hui énormément aux réfugiés, déjà premièrement. Et j'exhorte que ce soit les organisations, les ONG, les, les parties euh, parties publiques, donc les partenaires, les donateurs, ainsi que tout le monde, à soutenir cette noble cause aujourd'hui qui est de défendre la cause des réfugiés. Tout simplement, en investissant dans cette cause, cela permet aujourd'hui de sauver des vies, réellement, parce qu'il y a des gens, il y a des réfugiés qui souffrent quelque part dans le monde. Certes, d'autres personnes n'arrivent pas à le voir, ils ne regardent pas, mais si vous déplacez dans des camps de réfugiés ou dans des endroits où les réfugiés vivent, vous allez voir, il y a certaines choses que vraiment, c'est euh, déplorable. C'est des choses qu'aujourd'hui, on doit tous se poser la question sur ça. Aider surtout les jeunes qui, qui, qui travaillent sur la question de protection de l'enfance, leur donner les moyens nécessaires pour qu'ils puissent aujourd'hui euh, travailler et identifier les besoins que ces jeunes en ont afin de leur permettre tout simplement de s'épanouir et de renforcer leurs capacités. Donc, investir beaucoup plus aujourd'hui sur des jeunes réfugiés, je pense que c'est investir dans l'avenir et aussi leur donner une chance de réussir dans leur vie. C'est tout ce que je pourrais demander aux personnes qui sont là. Et je vous remercie encore une fois de plus. Je te rends la parole, Farida. 
Wow. <laughs> Thanks to all of you. Uh, we really appreciate and we appreciate our audience. Uh, but before we wrap up, I would like to ask all of you to please respond to the Mentimeter question to help us understand what uh, you found useful and interesting about the session. Over to you, Baat. Thank you so much. All right, uh, thank you so much again, uh, Farida. I can see my task, it's uh, so very easy. Yeah, and uh, as you can see on your screen, uh, there's uh, already the Mentimeter and very soon you're going to see uh, the question. Yeah, I know the panelists have shared their recommendations, but now what recommendations do you have to other refugee leaders, NGOs, donors? So uh, please uh, use the chats or maybe you can just use uh, the link and then you can share your recommendations. And then the other question is, what could Alliance members do to strengthen refugee youth-led child protection at the community level? Yeah, great. I can see uh, at least some comments coming in. Uh, to donors, it's very clear, give us more money. I like that. There's inclusion, uh, trust refugee and uh, coach them, trusting the capacities of uh, those who are most closely connected to those affected, and uh, non-discrimination of young refugees, ideas or initiatives based on their age and support in building up their capacity to manage projects in project implementation, Volunteering, I can also see in the chats. Uh, donors to uh, Fixable, uh, we funding uh, the need of uh, the affected population. Uh, learn from uh, all crises and uh, adjust your policies. Please keep them coming. And then whilst we are also, uh, you can also think about like what could Alliance uh, members do to strengthen refugee youth-led uh, protection at uh, the community level? Yeah, so that is the question. Yeah, so I understand that uh, at least this is, uh, you know, a time to share our recommendations. Yeah, so what do you like uh, the Alliance uh, to do to strengthen the refugee youth led child protection at the community level? Join the community level child protection task force of the Alliance capacity strengthening uh, the actors. Yes, keep them coming. Advocacy, which is very important as well. Support the knowledge uh, and skills on the thematic areas. Yeah, great. I understand your yeah, training at uh, the protection task force. Yeah, I think that's really also important. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing at least um, these uh, recommendations. And I'm really sure that uh, the Alliance refugee leaders who are with us, even those who are following us uh, remotely, and uh, even um, uh, the NGOs as well. So they are noting down, and I'm sure that uh, very soon, um, at least they can maybe try to uh, implement. Yeah, I know that it's uh, uh, all of us who are supposed to uh, implement. I can see more uh, that are coming. And please, even if we end the call, I can um, just advise you to share these uh, uh, recommendations. Yeah, so now it's uh, time to thank, uh, first of all, uh, all the panelists. Yeah, for your wonderful uh, interventions, wonderful uh, recommendations. Yeah, I really like, um, you know, your interventions and recommendations. Thank you so much. And I would also like to thank all the participants who were here. I can see you were really participative. Yeah, I know you participated, the, uh, like using the chat box, uh, sharing your recommendations, sharing at least uh, some questions. And uh, we are really so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for your time. And I would like also to 
thank uh, the Alliance members and the Global Refugee Youth Network uh, for organizing such a wonderful session. So now, without wasting much of our time, it's just uh, for me the time to say thank you and uh, bye.